What's going on, guys? Okay, so you've been following the whole Mark Driscoll and, and John Lindell situation with the male stripper uh, in at the James River Church. You're pretty. You, I'm pretty sure you're aware of what, of what happened, right? This is just a follow up of what happened after. So what's happening right now is is that Pastor John is, is explaining of how everything that proceeded after the event seemed to go very well until let's go ahead and watch so right now what they're doing what what he's explaining is that pastor mark had posted a photo of him and pastor john together that way they can show the public that everything is fine and then look what happens you can see it there and it okay is obvious that he collabed us on the photo so it's a yeah. post by mark so what i just told you the picture was posted shortly after it was taken when mark returned to scottsdale arizona he sent me the following text at 5.10 p.m. Okay, let's see it. Pastor John, it's Mark here. I just landed back in Phoenix. I feel like I'm watching a strange Netflix show Ooh. I happen to be in. Thank you for 16 years of deep deposits and friendship. I love, appreciate, and respect you very much. My online team is the leading all negative. I'm not responding to anyone or anything, including text. So I guess right now, even if he felt the spirit of God prompting him to go ahead and call it out, the the human side of him, the the human side of him, as in like the 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 flesh, because believe it or not, the flesh, since it's always at war with the spirit, sometimes when you perceive tolerance, you might think, oh, well, I have to be tolerant because you know it's, it's you you can mistake that for a fruit of the spirit when that's not it, right? When the Holy Spirit tells you to to call something out. We have to be obedient and we have to be direct and we have to be blunt when God calls us to be blunt. You can see right here that with this text message that Pastor Mark felt bad. You can see that Pastor Mark's not retracting his words completely, but he's apologizing. You can see right here that, that even with the boldness that, that Pastor Mark felt at the moment, he still feels that friendship that he has for Pastor John because apparently they go way back. I'm Let's honored watching. to talk about whatever, whenever. I'm genuinely praying James 1, 5 for you and mean that sincerely. I deeply love you and your family and church family and appreciate the maturity and seasoned grace of your response under great pressure. Your character was proven and I'm grateful for you. Because it, ha it does happen if you call something out, even if you're a bit harsh, you know that it's from God, right? And even with that, that, that power, Right when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you you feel this power, you feel this boldness, right? So sometimes us as humans, we tend to be a little too too in our feelings to where we're like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I I know that it hurt that I had to I had to tell you the truth. You know, the truth hurts, and I had to tell you the truth, and I know it's painful for you to hear, right? So it's basically like like trying to 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 put a bandaid on on uh, on a wound that he felt. That he that he uh, inflicted but later that evening he started sending a string of texts to my son david lindell okay about alex and his past on saturday night it okay so more background on this so apparently alex which is the male stripper that was performing the act apparently at the t at the time of the event which was that happened on sunday right apparently he was already a convert he had already converted to christianity apparently uh being a stripper was only part of his past it's not part of his of his current lifestyle right now apparently right people do research man once once something goes viral they look at people and and they find all kinds of stuff on on, on a person right so this is where he's getting at watch 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 this at 10 30 p.m mark texted david i'm not david's his son by the way sharing this with everyone but i'd expect a media discovery i'm very sorry then he sent another text that said anyone it seemed that Mark had been embarrassed publicly and he was getting ready to create a firestorm. On Saturday night at 11.26 p.m., Mark texted David, he, that's Alex, posted James River on his social media with your gals, gay porn stripper, Jezebel. So after giving him much thought, because what happens sometimes is that you give a strong word and then you realize the friendship you have with that person. So you're like, oh, man, like I feel like I was a little bit too harsh on you by giving you the word of God, which was Mark's confrontation to Pastor John. 
and what happened right here and i can tell you <laughs> i can tell you what happened what what probably happened i'm 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 assuming right um what happened was that mark got into prayer right so after he got into prayer i'm pretty sure he felt the conviction of the holy spirit to where he said you you should not have taken back your apology and he had his eyes opened again and then he saw the act for what it really was he sent another text two minutes later at 11 28 p.m my team has a file i'm very sorry it's completely demonic in total mark sent eight texts to david lindell that stopped at 12 30 a.m on sunday morning on sunday after church i texted mark so the more that mark thought about it the more he kind of um he kind of felt like Man, so it, it was completely wrong, and, and the more he's beginning to realize that he was actually in the right for calling it out when he did, because he later then had, had apologized to, to Pastor John, which is this guy right here that you see on the screen, um, and he said, well, maybe I was a little bit too harsh for what I said, you know, for I was a little too harsh on you for calling out a male stripper in the middle of a church service, <laughs> which is ridiculous, right? So how did... He was at now Mark is beginning to realize no I was right the first time right so this is this is him actually like it's it's all coming back to him the following text at 1 48 p.m. Mark I wanted to respond to your text for additional context Alex Magala is a believer and participated in worship at every opportunity he is a Christian regardless of the sin of his past. Okay, so let me stop right there. So, okay, Alex Magala, which was a male stripper, right? He said he was a Christian, but as of recently, he had posted a picture of him uh, meditating um, and doing some weird stuff, you know, like like Eastern uh, mysticism and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I don't, from the looks of it, the guy doesn't look like a genuine convert. And remember, we're in America. America is considered a Christian country, but Christian by moralistic values. Moralistic values is not the same thing as as being a, a real Christian, which in the Bible, the word, the word Christian is not even in the Bible. It probably is mentioned like once or twice. Um, but the definition of a Christian is little Christ. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow me, repent of your sins, and turn to me so that your sins can be for the remission of your sins. I don't see no Jesus here. His shirtless performance was similar to the Mar Ramahadi brothers. As for the pole, it is a Chinese acrobat pole. The Chinese pole dates back to at least the 12th century, around 900 years ago. By contrast, women's erotic pole dancing is less than 100 years old. To suggest that a professional acrobat using a device that's been around for a thousand years and this is the thing they'll go around and they'll they'll go around in circles and they'll try to justify the act they'll be like oh, okay so kind of like what they try to do with halloween they, they say that halloween was actually a christian holiday right well that's what that's what the people <laughs> that's what people say nowadays that it originated as a christian holiday uh when you know the basis of it is witchcraft and and satanism and and demonic uh rituals and and uh uh what you know like like demonic stuff you know so that's what they're trying to do here they um He's trying to justify something that's absurd and we know it's absurd but he's still trying to be like you know what maybe i can convince him that that it wasn't a bad thing you know that it, that um it was it was with innocent in, in intent right but i mean what's the elephant in the room it was it was an entertainment act and you know there's a price to pay when you want to bring entertainment and you want to you know, try to mock god god will not be mocked he'll be like oh you want to play that game and <laughs> God, God will put his fist down. Boom. So. Years is in the same categories an erotic dancer is at best misinformed or uninformed. We stand by the decision because Alex is a believer. I will defend him in the same way, the same way I have repeatedly stood by you and defended you. You to bring to an end your pursuit of the situation. Should you continue to make it an issue, I will seek mediation. I love you and your family. You may or may not want relationship with us, but we would still desire to be friends. I pray we can all move past the events of this last weekend. Okay, so it's, it's for all you prophetic people out there, right? When God gives you a strong word, 
And that strong word, you know, is, is, is a sword. It's a very sharp word. And God brings to mind the person who that word is for. And that person is a friend or a family member. It does in in our in our human nature or like it's gonna it's gonna hurt but this is a word from god so that's what happened pastor mark had a strong word from god for his friend and this text is fruit of mark's heart hurting for his friend but he knew that he had to t he, he knew that he had to speak truth the truth of god we're called to be faithful to god and we're called to please god not man and this is the thing when god gives you a strong word sometimes it will offend your friends sometimes it will offend people that you were close to right but we have to decide we have we have to count the cost that's what jesus said count the cost before you follow me it's not gonna be easy it's it's gonna be difficult it's, it's gonna be unpopular you might be hated you might be disliked people will not tell you but you can discern you you can feel the room if you're a prophetic person, you can feel the room. You're gonna be like, man, they didn't take it harsh. They they took it pretty bad, right? And uh, this is Mark just, you know, lay, um, he's he's being vulnerable with his feelings and saying, hey, I love you, but I had to tell you the truth. I had to bring you the word of the Lord. But I'm still your friend, and I still love you. And it was with the uttermost best intention. That's what I'm discerning right here. That's that's what I'm I'm seeing, right? All right, let's let's keep going. With min within minutes after sending that text, okay. the post with our picture together was removed mm. from Mark's account. Oh, I, see, this is the first time I'm watching this video, so I'm like, whoa, like, like even me, I'm like, like what, what's going on? You know, so let's, let's keep watching. Wait, what, uh, what, happened, what happened? What happened? Oh, I clicked on the mute button. Text. The post with our picture together was removed from Mark's account. Dang. On Sunday evening at 7.43, Mark texted Pastor John, thank you for your response. I love you and your family as well. My plan is to be saying and doing nothing but praying. I texted back less than an hour later at 8.36 p.m. Mark, thank you, that's great. I love you. Do you see the deception? Mark expressed love on the one hand, but took the picture down. He knew that Alex was a Christian, but it would seem that storyline would ruin his ability to generate clicks and sales. No, no, no. You got it. He got, he got all twisted. He's <laughs> he's trying to defend the mill stripper being a believer, right? Let's say he's a um, oh by the fruit of it, he's not a Christian, and he's he's trying to he's trying to villainize Mark Driscoll. Mark's on the right. Mark was calling out Jezebel. Mark was confronting the demonic. There's a whole demonic agenda that had to be confronted. I don't know why Pastor John is defending what what happened. I don't know why he can he can't come to I don't know why he just cannot come to humility and admit, hey, that was wrong. I repent. I receive your rebuke. Right? Because it does take humility for somebody to receive a rebuke. Because rebukes are not meant to hurt. They're meant to build up. Right? Uh, when Paul wrote to Corinthians, he said sorry not sorry like i i had to tell you the truth i had to rebuke you in the book of corinthians i'm sorry that it hurt you i'm sorry that you felt the pain but it was necessary so that you can turn from your wicked ways and you can see the wrong that is that is being done right that's the whole essence of a rebuke and a correction uh the word of god also says that god chastises and god corrects who he loves right if he didn't correct those that he loved then they would be illegitimate children because i mean why would god um correct somebody he doesn't love you know it doesn't make sense so that's right, let's, let's instantly go. on monday the word spread like wildfire about alex oh yeah monday was the day that that i started seeing the the whole uh all the videos online one can only wonder how that happened to take it a step further mark had not only texted my son david but he called David on Saturday night at 11.37 p.m. and left this voicemail. Hey, buddy, this is Driscoll. I love you very much. I feel like throwing up and crying. I'm very, very sorry. I sent you some text. I'm not, I'm, 
I'm not going to say any of that. I'm not going to share any of that. I'm not going to do anything. I love. Okay, so what happens is that when you're with God, sometimes He'll make you really bold, and the Holy Spirit is really He's strong, and He's very bold. Okay, so what happens is that when you're in the Spirit, you'll feel really bold, and you'll you te muy atrevido. Like you, you're like you, you feel um, invincible when you're in the spirit. So that's why you get bold and you confront everything the way it is. Once you get one, once you begin to walk in the flesh, you'll begin to to soften up way too much to where you're you don't want to call out what's what's wrong. You don't want to call out what's what's evil, right? You begin to get in your feelings. You begin to get in your flesh. You begin to get in your soul. So that's this is what's happening here with Mark. I'm giving you more insight on the spiritual side of it. What looks like it, right? That's what I'm picking up, right? So he has, he was very confrontative, right? He confronted uh, uh, what what was, right? He said that was wrong. That was Jezebel. That was a, that was a demonic um, uh, situation there with the with the with the pole and and the dancing and all that stuff. And now he's he's kind of saying. He's kind of softening it up because now he's in the flesh, right? But uh, like he said, he was in prayer. So when he's in prayer, I can imagine that he's already, he's in the spirit and he's feeling bold. He's feeling strong. Um, he's feeling the thunder, right? And then after you, you, you're you done with prayer, uh, it, <laughs> it's like, like, um, like you missed the way, right? Not, not the Holy Spirit, but um, just, just the boldness, right? You know what I'm talking about. Um, like the Holy Spirit comes upon you in different situations, right? And I want to say that that the Lord had come upon uh, Pastor Mark, so that's why he said he was so bold. And now he's like, oh, I'm, you know, like I'm, uh, I'm not gonna say anything, you know. Uh, I love you all, and and he's basically in his feelings. He's being too lovey dovey. Um, you can see the the sh the shifts in that, right? Um, all right, let's keep let's keep watching. Love you guys, and guys, and I wish I was wrong, but. I have my team quadruple check, check it unless they have completely messed up. This is a major crisis for you and James River. And so, yeah, just check your text thread. I CC'd your dad. I'll do anything I can to help. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I've been the guy who is getting melted to the ground. All, the, all that's happening with, on Mark's end, I can sense that it's spiritual. Uh, he's been in prayer, and he's he's felt the heart of God in this. He felt the heart of God, um, but as a human being, he also he also you know um, he he felt the consequences of of the result of the friendship with with this guy also. So that's what's happening here. There's he's he's kind of battling with 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 this thing. And what he's saying is, is that it's been pretty hard on him because <laughs> he's like, it's a word of God. Um, but he's also, it's, it's the flesh and, and the spirit right there clashing. And uh, you can see it. The very last thing I want to do is be anything but a shield to love and protect you guys because I care very much for you and you guys mean the world to me. You see, he's reaffirming his love. Mark, Mark is reaffirming his love for 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 this guy, Pastor John. So I just wanted you to hear it from me that I'm very devastated, very broken heart. You see? I love you guys very much. Yeah. I'm for you. And if there's anything I can do to help without making things worse. But he didn't make things worse. He did the right thing to begin with. But see, when you're in the spirit, like I said, you feel bold. And then uh, after some time, you begin to to get in your soul and, and in your feelings. And, and this is what happens. You begin to be like, man, like maybe I was too harsh for... For giving you the strong word of God, right? And as it's, it's, it's normal, you know, people people that are prophetic, you know, people that, that hear from God and people that are that that feel God, um, they go through these type of things. I'm open to that. Know that I feel absolutely terrible, and I'm praying. Yeah, and I just yeah, because you can also feel like God is it's like you tell God, you're like Father, this is a a strong word. It's really, a and that's what's happening. Appreciate the way you treated my son and son-in-law. You're a good man, David. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Mark called David again on Monday at 11.25 a.m., but left no message. Given Mark's response to me, I suggested that David should, as a courtesy, return Mark's call, which he did at 12.03 p.m. on Monday. 
So I'm guessing that they, they saw everything on the internet on Monday morning because on Monday morning was when everything began to trend. So after they saw everything on Monday morning, that's when they, they uh, decided to respond to Mark, his calls. On the call. That's what I'm guessing. Mark reiterated what he said in the voicemail on Saturday night. He ended Yeah, you see Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning, they were like, oh, it's, it's whatever. And then they saw all the trending on YouTube, on social media, and that's when they decided to reach back to Mark. Those statements by saying, I am not wrong. See, now he's in the spirit again. Now he's confronting. He followed that up by saying the follow to Dave, the following to David. Okay, let's see. And David, this is as David remembers it. Okay. Number one, there is something wrong at James River Church. There you go. Now Mark's in the spirit again. Now he's being bold. Number two. The leadership with you, your dad, and your brother is enmeshment. Enmeshment to Mark means that's a group of people, any group that is against Mark or that Mark doesn't agree with. Number three, there is something evil at work in the church. You know, sometimes people can open doors to the demonic, right? I'm not saying that they're false, and that's not what Mark's saying either. It's just that um, what Mark is saying is that they gave room to the jezebel spirit they gave room to that demonic entity they gave room to the enemy to to corrupt that's what he's saying and he's saying you have a lot of corruption in your church kind of like what jesus uh rebuked in, in revelation 3 he rebuked the laodicean church for for allowing compromise for allowing corruption and filth uh and and tolerating it tolerating it um and by the looks of it right now james river church is celebrating it so let's let's see let's keep going and they're even defending it let's see something is different since the last time i came there is a mixture of the sinful and the sacred yeah that's corruption god doesn't like that number four the reason that god is still blessing is because of the foundation of grace made by years of bible teaching amen amen the bible also says that the sun shines on the just and on the unjust alike and rain and God sends rain to the just and the unjust alike. Okay, so you and your neighbor, for example, your neighbor might not be a believer, but you are a believer. It does just because your neighbor is not a believer doesn't mean the sun will not shine on your neighbor tomorrow morning, right? So it, it's God, God by His abundant grace and mercy, so gives us the opportunity every day, right? So I feel like this is just God's grace over the ministry still. Um, and let's see what, the, what he says next. Okay. Number five, and I'm numbering him because these are statements David remembered. David, you need to differentiate. What Mark means by that is you need to separate yourself. Okay, yeah, that can mean that. Or it can also mean, David, you have to discern. You have to read your word. You have to get in the prayer closet. You have to get to know the voice of your shepherd. They're not going to be falling for this kind of stuff. Deception. And if you don't, James River Church may cease to exist. You see, this is what happens. When you play with God and when you mock God, God will shut you down. <laughs> God will shut you down. Right? So if you mock God and, and you know God, if, if uh, you've been with God and, and you not only um, not only deviate from, from his heart, from, from him, but it, you begin to basically mock like the harlot on the dragon. You begin to mock and you allow corruption and mockery in the church. And, and you don't repent and you, in fact, try to defend and justify it. God will take justice and he'll, God will take action, right? God will not be mocked, guys. We have to repent. We, the American church cannot keep doing this. Uh, if if this church, I'm telling you right now, if this church get, ceases to exist in the next five years, you can be sure that God shut it down and God pronounced judgment on that church for for the mockery and and the the lack of repentance and and the unwillingness to humble themselves and and realize that they were wrong, right? And that's what's going to begin to happen throughout America. America treats Christianity like a joke. They, they turned it more into entertainment, into business, into into uh, into visitor and, and and 
uh, re retention of, of people in the church. They just want your tithes. I'm not saying everybody's like that. I'm not saying every big church does that, but you know, this is the American church, everybody. Sadly. All right, let's keep watching. Let's see what else he says. <clears throat> Number six, this is a word from the Lord for you. This may be the most important moment of your life. Number seven, Brandon is a broken man. The fact he could watch that guy in rehearsal and says, say nothing, says something is wrong. Something is wrong with him. I agree with Pastor Mark. And I believe, I want to say that Pastor Mark, when he's saying all this stuff, he's saying it with a broken heart. He, he's not saying it as in a way to, to, to poke a stick. No, he's saying it with a broken heart like, hey, you have to realize that when you see this kind of stuff and you don't call it out, you have no discernment. Yeah, no discernment. That just shows that you can't. Can you not see spiritual things? Can you not hear spiritual things? Do you not feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost? Do you not feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Do you not feel the Holy Spirit telling you that this is wrong? Even by the word of God alone. Where, where, where would you see Jesus condoning this type of behavior? It can cause other people to stumble. Hey, some men struggle with homosexual thoughts. You don't know if the men there were, were even lusting after, after the, the, the pole dancer. If you can't even if you can't even discern that, there's something wrong. Maybe you don't feel the tug of the Holy Spirit, but but by Scripture, even even by 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 uh, knowledge, you should know. The word says, "Do not uh, be careful not to allow your brother to stumble." Okay, let's go. Let's let's keep going. But I I come I, I understand Mark. But you need number eight to mm. differentiate. And become the leader of James River Church. In other words, you have to begin to, to discern and develop discernment and take authority because no one else has the backbone to do it. This is your fulcrum moment. What kind of person says those things? Uh, a person that calls out sin, a person that confronts Jezebel, a person that will stand for righteousness and will draw the line and, and put a boundary when there is wrong in the church and we'll call it out by name guys we have to do this we we can't just sit by and and um allow the enemy to, to just hover over our heads and and you know us um tolerate it right stuff like this guys i mean you're sitting there and and you're allowing this to happen you know how do you know god is not is not saying because you're not saying nothing you know, the Bible says that uh, it is sin when you know what you ought to do and not do it. And this, it's sad, man, to, to not not for Mark, man. Mark's doing the right thing. Sad for this guy, Pastor John Lindell. You know, how, how can you be justifying those heinous acts? You know, all that. Um, it's it's absurd. How, how can you justify it? How, how can you say we... Um, they can't because look notice how he's saying we did the right thing <laughs> what's right about that there's nothing right about that all of that is negative all right so let's 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 talk about it what what, would, what? so let, let's look at it from pastor john's perspective and even if we were to side with pastor john on this what fruit would that have produced any good fruit no entertainment maybe at best but the fruit that it would produce could have been lust in some men you don't know when men struggle with homosexual thoughts and and desires struggle right you uh also i mean i don't understand how that's inspiring and, and motivational right and and think that that's a good idea that men would want to see another man do that kind of stuff you know like it, it doesn't make sense but it's pretty sad how how i don't get how this guy's defending it you know See, some people just have a huge ego. Some people just have a nasty amount of pride. You know what? It's it's heartbreaking. I'm not saying this to to beat on on Pastor John, but it's it's sad and and heartbreaking. I'm like, man, you should know better, James. Uh, I believe one. Uh, no, James five. I want to say James five says not everybody should become teachers, for they'll be held to a higher standard. Pastor John is a teacher. He's teaching the word of God. 
So because he's in that position and he's teaching the word of God, he will be held to a higher standard. And I mean, if anybody close to this guy sees this video, I, I pray he he repents and he turns away from from defending this this type of stuff, right? And you know they've done some other stuff on the on the on the church. So I've heard of, of like monster trucks and all that stuff. Oh, that's not, I don't see nothing wrong with that, as long as you keep Jesus at the center, and you know you you reap the harvest, right? Uh, you you announce the gospel you introduce the gospel there's nothing wrong with like adding more stuff you know, like like entertainment wise right um but when it comes to like like this type of stuff to where you're like oh like how close can i get to sin how close can i get to the fire without getting burned well this guy got a little too close and well he went viral in the last few days infamously let me say this, Brandon is a man of God in every sense of the word. You see people like this will start clapping and they'll start getting excited <laughs> because they, they themselves don't have discernment. You're telling me that nobody in that auditorium, look at how many people are there. Easily like probably four or five hundred people. You can't tell me at least one person in there has the discernment to say that if somebody allowed that kind of stuff to go down, and that they have discernment, they have the correct discernment. I don't know, man. That's that's pretty wild, man. I mean, th th at this point, this is all um, it's all hype. The clapping is hype. God is trying to confront it, and you can see it in the text. You can see how how Mark is is being bold against um against all this stuff. And you see how how Mark is confronting it, and I believe that God is is the one that's prompting Mark to do that. But this is in in some way, and this is just my opinion, right? I mean, I get it. Maybe maybe the guy. I hope I hope he he realizes what that it was wrong, and I hope he realizes and and repented, right? If he has a repentant heart, Amen, brother. You know, get up and move forward, move forward. You know. Um, you're forgiven, you know, if you repent, you know, you have, to, you have to repent, you have to acknowledge, hey, that was wrong. Never do that again. <coughs> you know, you're, you're called to be a shepherd to the flock. You're supposed to take care of the flock of Jesus. They're not your flock. They belong to Christ, right? So how would you, how, how, how can you steward a, a, a sheep of God in a way that would probably incite lust in them? Man, that's, that's crazy. I wouldn't be clapping here. No, you gotta call wrong, wrong. In fact, I will take it as. There has to be accountability. That's not here. Step further. David is a man of God in every sense of the word. Man of God would not have allowed that. So they're just hyping each other up. Uh, let me see. All right, let's see. At 1:33 p.m. Okay, let's see what's about to happen. I texted Mark the following: Mark, what in the world? Your call to David was ridiculous. I thought your plan was to, and I'm quoting his last text to me, to be saying nothing and doing nothing but praying. Guys, you can, if you're a spiritual person, if you're a prayerful person, the result of praying is boldness. So he was saying like, I'm not going to do nothing. Well, this is Mark. I'm quoting Mark. I'm not going to do nothing. This is behind us. I'm just going to be praying and I'm not going to do nothing. When Mark gets in the prayer closet, guess what happens? He gets bold. Who's that? That's the Holy Spirit making him bold to confront the wrong and to confront the darkness i know you're clapping right there behind that camera right i'm clapping in my heart too i'm clapping in my spirit i'm clapping in my mind yes sir that's what prayer does prayer makes you bold prayer makes you confident and prayer help like makes you confront darkness and makes you confront what you have to confront and what god tells you to confront he had integrity but to god amen so which is it where is your integrity? It was there, but to God. He had integrity to God. 
At to holiness, to righteousness. 1.34 p.m., Mark responded with this text. I did not call David, he called me. I left a voicemail days ago. What Mark had done at this point was so egregious. I disagree. Attempting to tear down the leadership of the church. No, he's trying to rebuke them and tell them, hey, get right, because right now the direction that you're heading, it ain't good. Attempting to create doubt and friction between brothers. No, he's trying to bring rebuke and correction in a loving way. Attempting to sow discord between a father and a son. That's not true. It seems demonic to me. No, in fact, what he allowed and what he's defending is the demonic thing. See how some people will try to villainize the, um, the, the men of God that confront darkness? See, see how, how twisted this is, this is getting? I don't get how people can side with this kind of stuff, man. I mean, people siding with this kind of stuff, they have no discernment. I'll tell you right now. No, I, I sound like this because um, I've been talking for quite a while already. And honestly, it makes me very, very concerned for Mark. No, I really believe this pastor should be concerned about his own spiritual life. Mm. At that point, we moved to step two in the Matthew 18 process. Okay, so the Matthew 18 says that if your brother offends you, um, basically bring it to his attention. That way you can settle, settle the matters, right? But Pastor Mark wasn't trying to offend John Lindell. Pastor Mark was confronting the principality in the event. The offense that John took was just collateral. All right, let's keep hearing. Matthew 18, 16. But if you will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So the offense wasn't direct. So it, that's why it wasn't necessary because the offense, the offense was not directed at one another. Mark was just trying to stand for what was right and he was trying to lead the flock the right way. Within an hour, I called Dr. Jimmy Evans, the founder of Marriage Today. Oh, I know Jimmy Evans. I used to listen to him pretty often. The Tipping Point podcast and the founder and president of EXO Marriage. Okay. Jimmy Evans, if you do not know him, is one of the finest Christian leaders in the United States of America today. Sure, yeah, he's a man of God. Okay. Oh, low battery. Those I sought counsel from said that Jimmy was very likely the only spiritual advisor that Mark would listen to. Dr. Jimmy... So I'm guessing Pastor Jimmy's like a mentor to Mark? Jimmy Evans called Mark on Monday afternoon, and Mark returned his call on Monday evening. Dr. Evans repeatedly told Mark Driscoll that he needed to repent. Each time, all that Mark would say is that Jimmy was a spiritual father to him and a friend that he loved. But Mark was unwilling to repent and still has not repented. There's no need for Mark to repent when you <laughs> I'm laughing because it's ridiculous. You're being told to repent for confronting Jezebel. Like <laughs> that's okay, this is just absurd, man. You do realize that even there nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Don't put anybody on a do not put anybody on the pedestal. Even people you look up to will let you down. Yeah sometimes even people that you look up to can unside with you on side and sometimes people that you look up to even as spiritual people spiritual leaders spiritual fathers etc let me let me let you all know they can be wrong sometimes they can be wrong sometimes okay so all right let's see what happened next so he's telling so <laughs> This is just so ridiculous. Sometimes I'm even out of words because I'm just like, I, I can't fathom the ridiculous and I can't fathom the ridiculousness in this whole situation of what he's talking about. So Pastor Mark initially called John and, and, and uh, James River Church to repent for allowing a male stripper to perform on the stage in front of maybe a few hundred or thousand of people thousands of people 
who do you think is in the right? Pastor Mark for confronting Jezebel? Pastor Mark for confronting uh, wickedness in the church? Or Pastor John, which has no solid defense and in fact is, is trying to villainize Pastor Mark and make him look like the bad guy? He's like, oh, no, I'm not the bad guy. <laughs> you are, you know? This is a form of, of manipulation, insecurity, and pride. Sadly. This is very sad, bro. Really. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to stop the video right here, guys. But, um... Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Comment down below. Right? I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your, your stance on it. Is Pastor John on the right and correct in calling Mark... Driscoll to repent for confronting Jezebel and for standing for righteousness and holiness comment your thoughts down below I think this is just getting very ridiculous to where I would just say guys it happened repent learn from your mistakes so the the big thing here is is acknowledging that it was wrong repenting to the Lord to the Lord fear God first of all repenting to the Lord and admitting that it was wrong and and not doing it again leading the flock the right way all this lack of repentance is making all this stuff worse as you're seeing now it's escalating to this and i'm gonna start right here guys subscribe to the channel like the video comment your thoughts i want to hear what you think about this whole situation i think it's ridiculous but i want to hear what you think all right guys laters